everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Shannon O'Hagan, and I am the Assistant Director for International Recruitment in the Office of International Undergraduate Admissions. Um, our Facebook Live event today is going to be about living at Mizzou, and I have two wonderful panelists here who I'm going to have introduce themselves for you now. So can we start? I'm Tyler Page. I'm the Interim Director for Residential Life, meaning I oversee all the housing on campus. Um, hello, my name is Maggie. I'm an international student ambassador. I'm from China. Great. Thank you. Thank you both for being here today. And how this is going to work is I'm going to ask our panelists some questions about the different living experiences at the University of Missouri. If you have any questions that you want to ask us, feel free to type those in and we'll get to them. And um, we also have some that have been asked in advance. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, if you want to start perhaps with sort of an overview of some of the different types of housing options available at the university for students when they live on campus. Sure. We have primarily have three types. And so what we have the most of is what we call community style. And so you live down a hallway with a group of other students of similar age and you share a bathroom. And so the bathroom, so you would find multiple shower stalls within there, multiple toilet fixtures and a sink. Um, it does provide a great deal of privacy, but it is shared among the hallway. So it provides a wonderful opportunity to get to know the students that you're living with. The other style is called suite style and you would either have a room by yourself or you would share it with um, a roommate. And then there's a bathroom that's next to it. And then on the other side of that is another room. And so you share that bathroom with a, um, at most three other individuals. And then we also offer apartment style living on campus. And so this would be on the edge of campus, um, traditionally for um, older students, graduate students. And so that's apartment style living. So you have your own bedroom, uh, kitchen, living room that would be provided as an option as well. And Maggie, could you maybe talk about your residence hall where you live and the type of style that it is? Uh, I live in the Mark Twain in my freshman year, and uh, it's basically for the general students. And the the style is the suit style, so I shared my bathroom with my roommates. So it's kind of like live alone, but you also have a friend to live with. So if you have a question about homework or like just talking about different mm -hmm. stuff, just go to another room and knock and the thing. It's easy to make friends, I think. Thank you. Uh, here at the University of Missouri, we do have a requirement for first year students, first year freshmen to live on campus. And Tyler, can you maybe explain why that is, why we have that as a requirement at Mizzou? Sure, so what we've done through just really national research and research we've done at the University of Missouri is that a freshman student that lives on campus is more likely to have a successful transition to the institution. So they're gonna kind of meet those peer support groups that help them become part of the experience. They're more likely to be retained through multiple years and graduate on time. And so given those success factors, we require students to live on campus their first year. Great. Now we'll talk a little bit about the, the process, what students need to do in order to apply for housing, what kind of that timeline is like, um, especially for, we know we have some students who are watching who have already been admitted to the university, maybe haven't completely finished that process yet. We might have some others who are looking to apply to future years and so how they can plan ahead. Right. So for students that have already been admitted, they're looking to come to Mizzou for fall 2019. The next priority deadline to sign up for housing uh, is May 1st. So you go in, you complete a preference form, which is basically a really simple form that asks you what style of living would you like? And so you, I want a community style or I want a suite style. You want a room by yourself or you would like a roommate? You also pick the geographical area of campus that you want to live. And you tell us a couple other factors about yourself that help us figure out which room is best for you. If you do that by May 1st, then we will assign you and tell you where you will be living on June 1st. For incoming students that are thinking about Mizzou for next year, so for fall 2020, then we will open, well, you'll be able to begin applying to the University of Missouri, I believe, August 1st but we will open the housing process on December 1st. And then you would be able to go in and start preferencing, share your preferences with us, and then do a housing contract with us. And then we will work through the housing process with you for that upcoming academic year. Great. And for students who have already done the process and who just got their assignments, where can they find where their assignment is? So we would have sent an email to you and it has a link in there and the link takes you to a web portal portal and it's called my housing and you would go in there and you use your university username and your password that you've set up through the University of Missouri 
and you'll go in there and you'll be able to see the hall and room you've been assigned. And if you have a roommate, their information will be in there as well. So you can email them and begin communicating with them. Great. Did you happen to have any contact with your suite mates before you moved into your residence hall? Uh, yes, she is very friendly and because uh, we can find our email address and the phone number. So she emailed me and said, I'm your, hi Maggie, I'm your roommate. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, this is my picture and uh, which year I'm in and uh, when will you come to Americans and uh, we are looking for you. So we talk a lot and uh, we also do the, some like research before we select the roommates like um, like different style. Do you, can you talk about that? So you, well, if you know who you want to live with ahead of time and so you can do that through through Facebook or through other social media um, platforms, if you identify who they are, you can preference them as a roommate. And then we will do our best to match you together and put you in the same room together here at the university. Uh, we don't have a matching process necessarily. We do have some academic programs that assist with that. So if you're in the honors college, we will work to put you with another honors student. Um, we have an academic program called the FIGS program or freshman interest groups. And so that helps us identify you by academic interest and we would put you with somebody of similar academic interest. I think one of the things that's pretty exciting in terms of news this year is uh, the affordability initiatives that have been going on. So could you maybe highlight some of those things that um, Residential Life has done to, to make housing affordable for students? Right, so over the last two years, this coming year will be the second year, we've lowered the cost of to live on campus. And part of that is to really to make it more affordable to serve our students at the university better. And so when you look at our website, you'll see multiple price points. And so you'll see um, some community style halls that we would say are more affordable than others. And then um, if you're looking for that increased privacy though, and that kind of more spacious living, you will find more of a premium style housing. And so you have the opportunity to choose what's best for you. Okay. And as far as students who perhaps want to be able to live in the residence halls year round, um, so maybe they are from China or India mm -hmm. and, and maybe they don't want to have to go home um, over breaks, is that option available to them? Yeah, we do have 365 housing and you don't have to make that decision before you come here. Um, if you do, then great, we will put you in one of our residence halls that's is open 365 and so you would move into it you get your room situated and you don't have to move out until you graduate um, you don't actually have to be enrolled in summer classes either so as long as you're enrolled in the upcoming term then that room is yours so we will have a number of students this coming summer that will contract with us for 365 they'll move everything in and then they may go home to China and then come back you know, before the start of the semester. That way their room is situated. They don't have to get a storage unit. They don't have to worry about transporting their items to and from um, their home. And it's just easier, more convenient for them. Okay. And let's talk a little bit about amenities. So Maggie, when you moved into your room, um, what were some of the things that were already in there for you? Oh, we have bed and uh, also the tables for study. And uh, we also have the well, what is it called? The place to put the clothes, the closet, closet. So the closet yeah. and uh, I think you have the everything. You just need to bring your clothes and also the pillow stuff like that. I think that's it. They have everything in the dormitory already. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll find what we would call a furnished bedroom. So you you would have that bed, mattress, a desk, a chair, closet. And so kind of the structure, what we see a lot of students that are coming from um, another country is that the pillow, some of the bedding, any of the bulkier items, um, well, they will purchase once they arrive here in Columbia. Mm -hmm. That way you don't have to worry about it taking space um, while you're traveling here with it. And there is time built into that orientation week to, to do trips to, to retailers like Walmart or Target to purchase those items. Um, in terms of the other amenities, so things like laundry or Wi-Fi, are those extra costs or is that built into the, to the cost of the rates? Yeah, sure. So um, all of our halls have Wi-Fi. They all have an Ethernet port as well. So you'll be able to plug in. So if you're looking for a fast connection um, and all those are covered within the charge. All of the residence halls have laundry as well. And that's included in the cost. So you can go down and do as much laundry as you wish uh, with no additional cost. Um, you'll find study spaces within the halls. You'll find computer labs that are strategically located within our residential neighborhoods. And so you'll be able to go find a computer easily accessible. 
um, you'll find a lot of gaming equipment. So, you know, whether it's a, a video game system, ping pong tables, foosball tables, you know, kind of scattered it in various residence halls as well. Um, and then TVs, of course, or in some public spaces as well. Great. Now, one of the questions I get asked fairly often is about safety, safety measures in place on campus and in residence halls. So maybe both of you could potentially talk about some of those measures in place to, to make residence hall living a safe environment. Uh, every student will use their student card to go inside their room and even the building. So I think it's very safe for the students who just come to the country or uh, the freshman students. So I don't think the safe is the problems I will be worried about. And uh, also, mm, no, I was thinking about the study. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can talk about studying a bit. Yeah. Um, I think I, I never worry about safe when I come to Mizu, actually. Great. So, um, Within Mizzou as a whole, um, University of Missouri has its own police force, and so those officers um, are solely dedicated to the university and the students and faculty and staff that are at the university. And so if there is an incident, uh, their response time is minutes. Um, additionally, we have a hospital that's on campus, and so if a student uh, becomes ill within one of our residence halls, they'll be transported to a hospital, again, that is on campus. Um, should somebody leave one of our residence halls and be transported to the hospital, then one of our staff members will go with them to check on them to make sure everything is okay. Um, additionally, within each residence hall, we have student employees, we call them RAs. They live on the floor with the residents. At least one of them is on call, so they're accessible by a phone 24 seven. So you know, no matter what time of day, you can call them and get assistance if your door lock is broken, um, if you have a question about something, they're always accessible. Every residence hall also has a front desk. So when you enter the front door, there's a desk and that's where your mail would be and everything like that. There's a front desk worker that will staff that desk either till one in the morning or three in the morning, depending upon the day of the week. And then beyond that, we have professional staff that are on call. So they have a phone as well and they're accessible for um, student support um, and crisis management every day of the year, every hour of the day, and they work very closely with our university police department should any student kind of need some additional support. That's great. Uh, speaking of support services, I think that's one of the things that's really great about living on campus is the many different types of support services available to students, and one of those being academic support. So um, one of the things that I think isn't as well known internationally are things called FIGs or first year, uh, first year interest groups as well as uh, learning communities. So maybe you could touch on what those are um, kind of in general for students. So a FIG a freshman interest group is based upon an academic discipline. So for example, we have engineering FIGs. And so this is a collaboration with the College of Engineering and it takes roughly 20 students. They will live together on the same floor they will all be enrolled in a seminar course, a one credit hour seminar course together. And that one credit hour course is taught by an RA, so a student staff member that is an engineer, an upper class engineer, and a faculty member from the College of Engineering. And that one credit hour course is basically an introduction to the university, study skills, and an introduction to the College of Engineering. And then they will also be enrolled as a group into at least three other courses. So for example, engineering, every freshman engineer has to take chemistry 1320. And so our FIG students, when they walk into that chemistry course, even though there may be a lot of other students in there, they at least will know all their FIG students. And so when it comes time to do homework, ask questions, they will have those FIG students to ask. And if they need additional support, well, their RA lives on the floor with them and their RA is an upper class engineering student, so they've already done everything. So they're preparing for internships, and so they're helping guide the way and mentor the freshmen as they're moving through. Um, a learning community is basically taking a lot of students that have a similar interest and so and putting them together in housing. So we have an education learning community. And so it is a lot of individuals that are majoring in education of some degree that have an interest in living together. And so we will cluster them together. We will bring faculty into the residence hall to meet with them. But it's, it is a loosely structured environment so that, one, you can be housed with other people that have different interests, but you have easy access to those that have a, a similar academic um, career path as yourself. 
Maggie, you were starting to talk earlier about um, sort of the study spaces available. So could you kind of touch on that now and uh, explain what resources you found um, in terms of being able to study where, where you live? Uh, every floor have the individual study room and also the group study room. So if you don't want to study at a room, you can just go into this like study room to study. Uh, they have the Wi-Fi, we talked about that earlier. And uh, also they provide some like drinks, also uh, snacks for you. And also like Mark Twain is the place for most mostly journalism students. So they have a lot of paperwork to finish at night, especially at night. So the school set up the writing center at Mark Twain I think from 6 to 10, 10 p.m., I think which very good. So people, when they write in the essay or paperwork, they can just go in down and uh, they can help you too with the grammar and um, structure with the writing, which is super good for students to study mm -hmm. and they will also relax. <laughs> right. Are there any other academic support services you wanted to highlight in any other halls, like the tutoring? Well, we do have tutoring that we offer again, kind of in, in their neighborhoods of our residence halls. And so you'll be able to get um, assistance with math. You'll be able to get writing assistance as well. And then occasionally the base fund discipline, perhaps um, assistance with chemistry. Right. Now, in addition to academic support, one of the things that's great is community building and being able to connect with other students. So um, perhaps talking from the resident um, perspective, resident advisor perspective, what are those opportunities? What does that programming look like when living on campus and how students can make connections with the people they're living with? Well, from the start, we have something we call welcoming. And so uh, this year, you know, you would move in and then immediately upon moving in, we would have all these programs lined out that you would go with with your floor mates. And so all the individuals that live with you, our RAs would help oversee and help with that transition. So there's larger events that we would have with concerts and, and, and big kind of events based around food so you can socialize and get to know other community members at the university. And then we have smaller events where you would get to know maybe students of, uh, that are within your academic college or maybe there's a club or organization that you have an interest in. They would be meeting and helping you get to know other people and become connected to the university. And Maggie, do you have any examples of any programs you've participated in or things that you remember, um, especially from your first year, but even since then, of, of ways to kind of get connected with other people in your residence hall? Um, each week in our floor, we will meet together to know people, and uh, sometimes we study together. And uh, I remember because uh, I come in 2016, so we're watching the presentation for voting the presidents mm -hmm. together. Yeah. So it's pretty pretty good to know each other and enjoy snacks. And uh, also, we will have like the organization. Can I, can I call that organization like two different residential hall like mm -hmm. they together to have a meetings and uh, um, have some like fun, some games, stuff like that. So there's some activities with multiple residence halls and that kind of brought you all yes, together? Yes, some of them are engineering students because our is a, a journalism student, so we work together and uh, have fun to know each other. Great. Um, kind of a, sort of along those lines, another organization that's tied to residential life is the Residence Hall Association. So could you maybe talk about what that is and how that functions? So the Residence Hall Association is, is run by students and it's kind of the student governing body of our residents. And so kind of the, you could call it maybe the student government of the residence halls. And a portion of the kind of student fee funding is given to them and they work to provide programming and support that's in the best interest of the residents. And so they will do large scale programming. And so maybe purchase uh, football tickets and, um, and students all go to a game together or they may um, put on some type of food events, and so you can kind of come together or bring in speakers for you to learn or show movies um, out in our outdoor courtyard. And so it's a way that students can be involved, have control over some of the programming the interest that they have, um, but then also be provided support by uh, upper class students that have been around for a while as well. And we talked about some student support services when a student is, you know, sick or not feeling safe or those types of things. But what about if they're just feeling homesick or not getting along with their roommate? Um, who can they go to in, in that situation as well? 
So all of our staff have been trained to support students and to refer them to appropriate university resources. And so the University of Missouri has a great support structure. Um, so your RA, and then also there's a live-in professional in your hall as well. We call them a hall coordinator. And so they have an apartment within the building um, and they're a full-time professional and they will be able to support as well. And so we work closely with the International Center, the Counseling Center, the Wellness Resource Center, really every place on campus. And so based upon your needs, one, we will be able to support you to some degree, but then also connect you to other professionals on campus to ensure that you um, have the best possible experience at the university. Great. Uh, now, as far as students who are in, who just love residence life and they, they want to continue on after their, their first year, if you're an example of that, of course, what types of opportunities are there for continuing students? To live with us? Mm -hmm. or So, similar to 365 housing, you can always continue to live with us. Next year, we will have more returners come back to live with us than we've ever had in, in the university's history. Um, so it's very much a desirable uh, place for students to live. Um, but it also provides, you know, living with us provides easy access to classes. If you were to have a job on campus, if you're to be doing research on campus, um, you just get to walk out of your residence hall and immediately be there as well. We do have a lot of students that want to continue to live with us, but they also want to work with us. And so we employ well over 300 student employees uh, in a multitude of different positions, from the RA position to working that front desk um, to being uh, graphic designers or photographers for us. It really um, is quite the range of the student employment opportunities. And kind of along those lines of student employment, how do students um, find out about those opportunities or apply for them, be considered for those positions that are available? So we do a lot of communication over email. Um, we will do some social media posts. So if you follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, um, if you are living with us at that time, we will post up flyers. But really, the biggest way is if you're looking for something, it is to grab one of our staff members and just ask about it. Um, and they will be able to point you in the right direction. Um, and then I know, Maggie, you at one point did live off campus. And so for students who do decide to, to go off campus after their first year, um, what did that process look like for you in terms of finding a place to live um, and kind of those, those options available to be some of your friends who have lived both on and off campus? Um, I think living on campus is also very good because uh, like the end of the semester, they will put the fortune cookies mm -hmm. in my mm -hmm. mailbox. And the also live off the campus is also good options for you guys. They will put a lot of flyers and send it to you by email and says, uh, we have the housing open for four bedrooms, three bedrooms, and uh, we have shuttle from the school to the apartments at like eight o'clock to the end of like five or five or six p.m. And uh, they including all the furniture and also the uh, toilets, uh, kitchens inside. It's very good as well. Great. So in other words, there's tons of opportunities on campus, a lot of different styles um, available, but if students do choose to live off campus, there's also a lot of different price points and amenities, different yes. services. Great. Um, now, as far as, say, some non-traditional students, so whether they might be um, married or have kids or they're graduate students, um, what types of options are available to them? So we have two styles of housing, one we call um, the apartment complex, we call Terra, and it's a one or two bedroom apartment. And, um, and so it has a living room, it has a full kitchen in it. You're able to park outside your apartment if you have a car. And so that provides the best possible experience for students that are coming um, as a family. And so if you are traveling with uh, a parent or an in-law that's helping support you and your family, that can accommodate as well. Or if you have a young child that would be living with you, Terra Apartments would provide that um, at a very reasonable price. Um, we also have um, studio apartments or kind of one bedroom apartments. We call it manor house. And so that would be for our um, single um, family and grad or graduate students that would like that living experience. And it is right next to campus as well. Great. One other student group I didn't mention was transfer students. And so what is the process for students transferring from other university? Transfer students would be similar. Um, that timeline would apply. Um, so you would reach out to us and basically follow those very similar steps and we would provide that communication back to you. So the transfer students is should be living the campus? Transfer campus? students, well, transfer students have the option whether they choose to live with us or not because they're not that 
traditional first year student that's required. If you would wish to live with us, then, then reach out to us and we'll talk to you about your housing options because you would have more options than the traditional freshman. Um, but you're not required to. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different. So we would approach a transfer student slightly different than we would that traditional freshman that would live with us. Sure. The last kind of category I was wanting to touch on was more of the dining plan and the different um, kind of options there. Um, in terms of what's available to students. Um, is it far to get to their food <laughs> when they're hungry in the morning or whatever time of day? If you can maybe touch both of you on, on sort of the dining, some of those dining options. Um, you mentioned you. <laughs> the biggest reason I chose marketing is they have the dining service just in the first floor and they serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Even after nine o'clock, I think it's around nine o'clock. They also have the like the second dinner for you guys with hamburger, <laughs> fries, chicken. The chicken is the best. It's my favorite. <laughs> and uh, in the morning, you also have so many options with omelets. And uh, in the lunch and the dinner, you have ice cream, hamburger, pizza. Um, I know a lot of people is from international, so they also have the rice noodles for you guys. They all have a lot of options for both domestic and international students. So um, campus dining services, they have 29 different dining locations across campus. And so no matter where you're living or where you're taking class, there is a dining location with um, really close. And so you'll find that they do have three all you care to eat locations. So, so this would be similar to what you'd find in Mark Twain. You would go in at the meal time and you have a lot of different options to choose from. Then they also have specialty restaurants that are included. So if you would like um, barbecue or just a cheeseburger or uh, Mexican cuisine, they'll have these different restaurants across campus. And so you could choose to go there to dine as well. And then the meal plan, you would purchase it. It would be on your student ID. And so you wouldn't be using cash or anything. And you would just take your student ID, the same card that opens your room door, you would go for and you would use that to purchase your meals on campus. I think those kind of wrap up my questions. Is there anything I missed that you wanted to highlight? Uh, I received the question from students a lot about they came to me to earlier and the, where do they need to live? So uh, we are extremely accommodating. So we understand that traveling from another country to Columbia, um, one, I think it'd be extremely difficult, but we understand you don't have the most control over the time in which you would arrive to Columbia. So if you can communicate directly with our department, so you'd be able to find our website online and let us know the date and time that you would anticipate arriving, then we will work to accommodate you. So it doesn't matter if it's two in the morning or eight in the morning, we will work to get you into your room. But the biggest thing we can ask for is just communication with us so we can anticipate your arrival. Perfect. Any other final, final thoughts, sir? Well, thank you all for joining us. Before I do conclude, I wanted to provide some of the ways you can stay connected. So to find out more about Residential Life, go to housing.missouri.edu. The email address is housing at missouri.edu, and social media is at Mizzou Res Life. Um, so thank you for joining us. You can always reach out to International Admissions as well, and be sure to follow us on social media so that you know when our next Facebook Live event is. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.